Welcome to the latest episode of the Edgar Rice Burroughs mini podcast. These short podcasts are meant to supplement the full length episodes that I do with Scott Stewart and Jess Terrell, in which we generally talk about one of Edgar Rice Burroughs books in detail. My name is Tim DeForest. I'm the author of several books about what I call pre-digital pop culture, things like the pulp magazines that Burroughs was published in, old-time radio, classic comic books, old uh, B-movies, and so on. And I keep a blog about such things at comics, old-time radio, and other cool stuff. Right now, we're using the mini-podcast to do a chapter-by-chapter summary of the 1912 novel A Princess of Mars. Please note that we will be including spoilers both in, uh, regarding the chapter that we're discussing today and for the rest of the book and possibly for other books in the series. I would also recommend that you reread today's chapter before listening to the podcast, as I will be assuming that you are familiar with the events we are discussing. Today we'll be talking about chapter 16, and we get two important bits of characterization in this chapter, both of which make the protagonist more likable. John Carter accepts that Dejah Soros apparently wants uh, nothing more to do with him. He doesn't question that, but he comes to her anyway to help her escape, saying, quote, have none of me, if you will, but that you must aid me in effecting your escape, if such a thing is possible, is not my request, but my command. When you are safe once more in your father's court, you may do with me as you please. But for now, and uh, uh, from now on, until that day, I am your master, and you must obey and aid me. Now, he's not, John Carter is not being arrogant or misogynistic or stubborn. He merely wants to get her to safety and knows that, uh, that making her understand that obeying his commands until she, she is safely back in helium is the best way to ensure her safety. That, that he doesn't ask for a second chance with her or even ask for gratitude. It's clear that he will do whatever he needs to do to get her home. Then he will walk away from her forever if that's what she wants. Once again, John Carter's choices are ruled by his code of honor and his morality. Now, Deja also comes out looking good. She's a princess, and she can comport herself with dignity and grace even in the face of death. But there's no snobbery involved at all in this. At this point, John Carter has no status in Red Martian culture at all. Deja, though, is intelligent enough to realize she was wrong about him and gracious enough to apologize even though she's many, many levels above him on the Martian social ladder. I also enjoy the fact that John Carter consults both Deja and Sola when making a plan to escape. He recognizes their intelligence and their superior novel of the, a knowledge of the planet, using the facts they give him to come up with the best possible escape plan. I love that it all takes them, that, that, I love that all of them take innocent lives into account when they realize that taking the shortest route to helium could mean the deaths of people living along that route at the hands of the pursuing Tharks, they immediately discount that as a viable option. The plan going awry, of course, is due to Sir Koja's chronic eavesdropping. After praising their intelligence, I really do need to call all three of our heroes and heroines uh, out on this. I mean, for heaven's sakes, how many times does Sir Koja need to listen in on them before it occurs to them to take precautions? But when the plan does go awry, John Carter reacts intelligently to the shifting situation, taking precautions to re-enter his building co covertly, which in turn allows him to overhear the Green Martians who are waiting to ambush him. Burroughs is again showing Gar Carter's skill, uh, sh uh, showing his skill rather, in constructing a thrilling story. The events unfold logically and generate a high degree of tension and drama. That's it for now. Once again, my name is Tim DeForest. Please visit my blog at Comics Old Time Radio and other cool stuff. You'll also be able to find links to my Amazon.com author page there. Thank you for listening. We'll be back with another uh, mini podcast soon. And keep an ear out also for our full-length episodes.